Good afternoon. Good morning. My name is Vera Gomide. I work in the Flight Operation Support Department as Weight and Balance Engineer in Airbus, and I will be the host of our webinar today. The webinar is going to present the Airbus updates about cargo transportation in the cabin. But before we start, I just want to explain how this webinar works. The participants cannot speak. However, you are all invited to send your questions and comments via Q&A. We will start with the presentation on the cargo transport in the cabin. After the presentation, we will answer the frequently asked questions. Then we will have a break of five minutes so that you can use this time to send your additional questions. After this five minutes break, we will come back in order to answer the remaining questions. Since the start of the COVID-19 crisis, a large number of passenger aircraft are grounded. In the meantime, the demand for humanitarian and general cargo transport flight has increased. Air cargo should, therefore, be able to continuously deliver products. Following this wave, more and more operators are investigating the possibility to fly cargo using passenger aircraft. In order to support this type of operation, Airbus and authorities have issued several documents. In the last weeks, a new version of the EASA guidelines and of Airbus FOTG cargo transportation in the cabin was released. During this presentation, I will explain the reason for the revision of the Airbus guidance present their bus guidance for the transport of general cargo on the passenger seats, present their bus guidance for the transport of general cargo after the removal of the seats. Please note that this presentation is not dedicated to a particular aircraft type. The principles are the same for all the Airbus aircraft. Several airlines are already operating cargo-only configuration of passenger aircraft. In order to enable such operation, Airbus developed a set of technical and operational recommendations per FOT and regular updates of ISI article. Adherence to these recommendations allows safe and efficient cargo operation in passenger aircraft. Airbus reminds that in the type certification of the relevant large aeroplanes, the passenger cabin is not approved as a cargo compartment. Therefore, it does not meet the applicable requirements for the transportation of cargo. In this context, such operations must respect the recommendations of EASA, of Airbus, and of local authorities. EASA has issued a new version of guidelines for transport of cargo in passenger compartments. As just stated, the passenger cabin is not approved as a cargo compartment. The carriage of cargo in the cabin beyond already approved storage areas is neither covered by the approval of the aircraft nor by the approval of the seats. Therefore, an exemption is needed. The scope of EASA guidelines issued to exemption has increased compared to the previous version. Now, the exemption allows, on a temporary basis, the transport of cargo, magical and non magical, in the passenger cabin on the seats, or the transport of cargo, magical and non magical, directly attached onto the aircraft floor after removal of the seats. If the cargo transportation in the cabin is planned beyond the eight-month limit of the exemption 
ISTC or major mod is required. As previously explained, EASA expanded assumption to allow for more than magical goods to be transported on passenger seats. Exemption has to be issued by local authorities. No SB, STC is needed for a maximum exemption of eight months. Airbus has defined a dossier with the guidelines to apply for exemptions. This dossier has the objective of supporting the operators on the exemption process and is available on request. The seats are certified to carry up to 170 pounds or 77 kilograms. However, the other guidelines for exemption limited the weight of the cargo to 50 pounds or 22.7 kilograms per seat place. Cargo must be restrained using the primary load path of the seat so that each cargo installation meets applicable structural retention requirements. Potential restraint methods include seat belt, seat bins, seat legs, and seat tracks. Airbus provides restraint proposals based on common practices. If the weight is heavier than 50 pounds, or if the cargo restraint is not following as a recommendation, Airbus recommends that the seat supplier validate the cargo restraint proposal. Please note that the ISI article is already updated to consider as a weight per seat limitation. It also incorporates Airbus additional restraint proposal based on common practices. As stated before, EASA expanded exemption to allow for transport of general cargo after seat removal. Exemption can be requested by operators to their local authorities. However, if the cargo transportation in the cabin is planned beyond the eight months limit of the exemption, an STC or major mod is required. Airbus is working on an exemption dossier to support operators onto the exemption process request. The exemption dossier introduces the Airbus solution for cargo transportation after seats removal. The Airbus solution allows the use of already available cargo pallets on the cabin floor when seats are removed, while respecting the seat track load limit. The cargo loaded onto the pilot can then be restrained by a net already certified for pallet use. The objective of the Airbus seat removal solution is not to convert passenger to freighter aircraft. The solution will allow operation without risk of damaging seats and will provide increased volume and weight capability. This solution could provide up to 8 tons and 76 cubic meter additional capacity in the cabin area of A350 or A330. As a consequence, a330 and A350 aircraft could load approximately 12 to 13 tons of cargo on the passenger deck with the following main benefits. Robustness of the solution in terms of fire protection and load restraint. Easier and faster loading operation compared to on-seat option. 
and reduce the cabin tear. In order to deliver a safe and efficient solution for long-term operation, beyond the eight months limit of the exemption, the Airbus Task Force is actively working on solution approval alongside with authorities. The associated service bulletin for each aircraft type will identify the maximum pallet installation layout for each standard. It will also give guidelines for seat removal, cabin preparation, pallet installation, pallet retaining, cargo loading recommendations and procedures, firefighting requirements and new cabin instruction and limitation, and return it to original cabin configuration. The service bulletin targeted by end May for A330 and A350. Considering crew and procedures, the main changes in EASA guidelines issue two are minimum cabin crew. In issue one was expected one cabin crew. In guidance issue two, it is two for a single rail and three for A330, A350. Fixed oxygen system, the activation removal of the oxygen container required for areas in the cabin carrying cargo, and the cabin crew to carry the portable oxygen when walking in the cabin. Emergency equipment. New water fire X is mandated. Cabin crew need to know when and how to use this equipment. Minimize electrical loads. Switch off unused electrical pack seats and IFE galleys. Cabin crew to know which equipments are switched off. Airbus is analyzing the impact of this change and will provide guidance in a new update of ISI article. Crew and cabin procedure part will be revised accordingly in the, in the article. The transport of cargo in the cabin impact to the load control process at different levels. First, it has an impact on the aircraft empty weight and CG. It means dry operating weight and CG. As a consequence of the change in the aircraft operation, the current dry operational weight and dry operational CG in use may not be applicable anymore. The operator shall access the validity of the dry operational weight and the dry operational CG in use regarding the new aircraft operation. Then, the transport of cargo in cabin has an impact on the zero fuel weight and CG buildup. Starting with the dry operational weight and dry operational CG, the calculation of the aircraft zero fuel weight and associated CG combines the individual effect of all elements of load transported in the main and lower deck of the aircraft. While the consideration of lower deck loads remains unchanged, some adaptation of the calculation process is necessary for the main deck due to the new loading locations. The weight and CG impact of the items in the main deck have to be carefully calculated. The cargo in cabin has also an impact on the operational CG limits. If the current operational CG limits take into account a passenger distribution method per cabin zone, they are conservative and can be used for the transport of cargo in the cabin. If the current operational CG limits does not take into account a passenger distribution method per cabin zone, they can only be used for cargo transport in the cabin, provided that an individual cargo weight and CG impact is performed. 
Finally, the cargo in cabin has an impact on the load control, material and tools. If you are using a departure control system, you should contact your DCS provider to access the capability of the DCS system to calculate the weight and CG effect of the cargo transported in the cabin. If you are using a paper train and or fly smart plus load sheet, they may need adaptation depending on how the cargo in cabin effect is considered. More information is provided in the ISI article. In summary, for the transportation of cargo on the cabin, the operator has two options. A immediate solution to apply for an exemption from relevant civil authority using the Airbus solution and associated dossier available via tech request, or from end of May to apply an Airbus service bulletin. This route will be easier for operators as they don't need to justify the use of data included on the related service bulletin to their local aviation authority, since they result from an IASA approved change to type design. For the demand via tech request, please precise. If the cargo is to be transported on seats or after removal of the seats, if you are interested in SP or exemption, the aircraft type and MSN. Thanks for your attention. Now we will answer the frequently asked questions. In order to provide answers to these questions, I will have the support of my Airbus expert colleagues, uh, Carole Brillot, Weight and Balance Engineer Specialist. Carole, oh. can you? Uh, yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Uh, Vincent Buscari, uh, Weight and Balance Manager, Flight Operations. Hello, good morning or good afternoon. Uh, Jean Coutlis, uh, Cabin Operational Engineer Specialist. Hello everyone, good morning or good afternoon as well. Uh, Mikhail Koenig, expert in cabin, cabin safety regulations. Hello everybody. Uh, Serge Beide, Service Bulletin Validations. Serge? Okay, we miss it, Serge. I'll try to find him. Okay. So while I pick up uh, Serge as a panelist, uh, we have also Matthias Yerovant, white body freighter, and the leader of Airbus Task Force for cargo transportation in the cabin. Hello to everybody. Uh, and also uh, Captain Ian Lade, Vice President, Flight Operations, Support Training Standards. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Vera. So I'm just going to end here. Serious. Okay, so Serge, can you hear us? Good afternoon, good morning. Perfect. So, let's start with uh, the frequent asked questions. So Mikael, if you can support us with those answers linked to our worthiness. So the first sure. question is, uh, can you confirm that in EASA guidelines issued to you, the exemption scope has increased and now magical and no magical goods can be carried on the seats or on the floor after removal of the seats? Yes, so the scope has been increased. So now uh, it's also possible to uh, transport non-medical supplies on the seats or on the cabin floor if the seats are removed. Uh, can an operator follow the exemption process for the car cargo loading on the floor after removal of the seats without the Airbus SB? 
Yes, he can. Um, I will provide via tech request the dossier with the required information to support the operators when they wish to apply for an exemption. Okay, uh, we still have some questions linked to our worthiness. Uh, if I already have an exemption considering EASA guidelines issue one, do I need to request a new exemption considering the new version of the EASA guidelines? No, I mean, the exemption is valid and uh, it will be valid for the time uh, it has been granted. Yeah, so. Uh, the issue two is applicable to all exemption, exemption uh, requests that come after April 17. Is the other guideline also applicable for the transport of a mixed passenger cargo? No, um, a mix of pair paying passengers and cargo is uh, not part of the exemption process. It is currently not foreseen. And in any case, this solution requires an SDC or a major change. And currently, Airbus is not investigating. Yes. Considering the transport of magical cargo on the seats, is there any change considering the new version of the other guidelines? No. Um, the issue two of the guidelines is just extending the scope of the exemption um, with respect to uh, the issue one, but there is no impact on the transport of medical items on seats. And if we want to transport cargo only, in a red approved locations, do I need to ask for an exemption? No, these, these locations are um, already certified for, um, for the transport of cargo, so there is no um, exemption request needed. So uh, we have also received several questions linked to, to the limit of the seat. So the question is, can I carry more than 50 pounds per seat? Uh, yeah, from, yeah. From, the principle, from the principle, this is possible. Um, the seats um, are certified um, to carry up to 170 pounds. So the, the guidelines, as we all know, limit the weight to 50 pounds. So why, why is this? Um, this is to ease the exemption process. Yeah? So um, if the weight is limited to 50 pounds, um, exemptions will be easily granted. But however, if the cargo is heavier than 50 pounds per seat, um, Airbus would recommend to contact the seat manufacturer to validate the restraint of the cargo. So also linked to the transport on the seats, uh, can I use the seat backrest to restrain the cargo? Um, from the principle, yes. Um, however, the backrest of the of the seat um, is, does not form part of the um, primary load path of the seat. This is why um, this is why Alice proposes and recommends um, um, to contact the seat supplier, um, seat manufacturer, to validate the restraint of the cargo. And finally, uh, is there any CG constraint for carrying cargo on the seats? If uh, if we follow the limitation from the other? No, if we, um, this is also um, um, a reason why limiting it, if we stay um, below the 50 pounds, um, there is no, <clears throat> there is no, uh, there's no CG constraint. Okay, we just need to be uh, not, not higher than the, the seat back weight, high, right? Exactly. So the height of the cargo that is stored on the seat is limited to the uh, seat backrest height. Okay. So in order to not have the CG constraint anymore, we had to limit the weight, right? To 50 exactly. Pounds. Right. So uh, now we have some questions linked to load control. Uh, Carole, can you support us? Yes, of course. So, uh, first of all, we have a question about the way the LTS software is handling the cargo in cabin configuration. So, the answer is no, the LTS software is not able to produce a trim sheet package when you have removed the seat in the cabin. So, if you are removed, the, if you remove the seat in your cabin, 
to know if you can still use your current term sheet package, you can contact Airbus or NavBlue, and then we will um, analyze case by case your loading and if you can still use your current term sheet. Uh, we have received also another question about the way to um, to use the cargo converted in number of specs in the cabin zone. So the answer is yes, provided that you load evenly the cargo in your cabin zone. And then you still have in your operational limit, your CG operational limits, the uh, inaccuracy concerning the passenger distribution. If you want more information about the operational limits, how to use, how to calculate the CG of the cargo, you can refer to the IZ article that has been updated last week. So, um, we have received some questions for cabin operation. Jean, can you support uh, with those questions? Yes, so uh, one of the questions that we often receive is about the transportation uh, of additional cabin crew, for example, due to flight time limitation or to be able uh, to conduct the flight back, the return flight. So according to the guidelines, uh, the IASA, the objective is to minimize the amount of occupants, but not to uh, forbid to transport airline personnel. Uh, what the airline needs, if they want to transport additional crew, they need to justify uh, their role uh, to their national uh, aviation authority. Uh, and this excludes the transport of passengers, uh, for sure. Another question that we receive it is about the minimum number of cabin crew and where they have to be located in the cabin because the guidelines, the issue one, uh, was not very precise uh, on that. So on the guidelines issue two, it is clearly specified uh, that EASA recommendation is to have two cabin crew uh, for the single aid aircraft and three cabin crew for the twin ale aircraft. The recommendation from Airbus uh, that uh, comes from the guidelines as well is to uh, seat the cabin crew on the cabin attendant seats. And uh, the decision, uh, the position uh, uh, decision is um, must uh, enable the cabin crew to have a good visibility of the cargo in all cabin zones. Also, the cast, they need to have a mean to communicate because the crew uh, that are seated in the cabin, uh, they must be able to conduct firefighting and communicate. Thank you. And, f and finally, we have some questions linked to the service bulletin. Uh, Matthias, uh, can you confirm if Airbus is working on ISB for A320 family? So currently we are not working on this. We are focusing on AC30 and AC50. This is simply linked to the number of requests that we have and also to the, re to the fact that uh, operators currently looking at long range missions. So should somebody wish to carry cargo in the single eye family, you can follow the assumption process, either carrying cargo on the seats or removing seats and carrying cargo. Should we one day determine more requests for a service bulletin, we will certainly think about that and proceed with the service bulletin. Thanks. Then uh, we have a question, uh, I think, Serge, can you answer this one? Which is the main advantage of the SP compared to the exemption? Uh, yes, uh, the, the advantage, the main advantage of the SP compared to the exemption is that it, it allows uh, the, the airline to avoid the negotiation with the local authorities, but it also gives uh, um, the possibility to, to work, to, to, to use uh, the, the SP 
uh, beyond the eight months, which is uh, given by the exception. Yeah. And uh, this is our last frequent asked question. So how much is the SB going to cost? Uh, Matthias, can you give us some, your answer? So the exemption process, yes. The exemption process is, of course, free of charge. We are going to provide uh, technical data uh, via tech request to support the exemption process. For the service bulletin, the commercial policy is uh, currently reviewed and will be, of course, be communicated when available. Okay. So thanks for your attention. So now we will have five minutes for additional questions. Uh, please use the Q&A window. We come back soon for answering your questions.
So thank you all for your questions. So uh, we are going to answer some of them. So uh, Mikael, uh, we have one link to your worthiness. Uh, the question is, uh, the eight months exam period started uh, when exactly? It starts um, after the exemption is granted. So um, the, the operator petitions for an exemption, and when it is granted, the period starts. Okay, so it depends on the, each uh, operator, right? Once he he has yes. the exemption, then it started. Okay. It starts when the exemption is granted. Yes, when it, then then it starts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here we have a question linked to the types of seed. So does this exemption apply to transport magical supplies also in executive seeds? Um, from the principle, from the principle, um, yes, I would say, but um, 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 the load limitations uh, still have to be uh, maintained. It means uh, maximum the maximum uh, weight on the seat has to be limited to 50 pounds to speed up the exemption process. Uh, Carole, we have one uh, linkage to load control. Uh, by using FlySmart Plus, uh, can we convert the cargo load to number of passengers? in each cabin zone? Yes, as already said, yes, you can use the cabin zone to calculate the impact on CEG of your cargo, provided that you are following some conditions like loading evenly the cargo in the zone, put the heavier weight close to the center of gravity of the zone, um, and then in addition to know if you can use the uh, passenger zone to uh, to calculate for the CG impact, you have to take care about the operational limits and to know if you can use or not your current operational limits, you have to, to see uh, how they were calculated. Do you have a passenger inaccuracy distribution per zone or not or per row in your um, in your uh, calculation? When you are using FlySmart, you are using it per row the CG limits are done per row, per zone, sorry. So you can still use your current operational limits. And then I have another question, how to get the load sheet and trim sheet. So uh, it's a usual process. You have to contact Navlu or Airbus to have uh, your load sheet or your trim sheet package. We have a question that I think you also answered now. Uh, so the question is, will the load sheet data have to be modified even if the cargo is transported on seats without any change in aircraft configuration? So this is what I have said, yes. If you transport cargo on the seats, you can use your current uh, load sheet um, if you follow some recommendations. If you want more information about it, please refer to the IZ articles load control chapter. Everything is detailed. Uh, and if you have some doubt, just ask Airbus via tech requests and we will answer if you can still use your current trim sheet package or not. Thanks. Uh, Matthias, uh, I think this, with this question you can help us. Like, uh, they, we have received some questions uh, asking about uh, the types of pilots and uh, models or, and also some additional information about Airbus solution. Yes. So the types of pallets, uh, we know that they, or we made, we revit, reduce the pallet types, and uh, there are uh, there are pallets that fit through the the uh, passenger door. That's one criteria. So we have a, a few candidates that we are currently looking at. There are definitely can, uh, pallets that you can get through the passenger door, so it is feasible. We just need to select one. Uh, in terms of solution, we uh, will fix the pallets uh, in a particular configuration that is currently under review on the passenger uh, 
deck floor using ideally using standard cargo equipment and these pallets will then be loaded with cargo on a regular basis so they will remain in the aircraft and will be loaded uh, through the passenger door with cargo and these pallets uh, this cargo will then be fixed with a net with a standard cargo net to the, the pallets so the purpose is to use standard cargo equipment thanks uh, Jean, we have one question uh, here in Inca to cabin uh, procedures. Uh, if we only remove remove economic class, can we extra can extra crew fly in business class? Uh, so this is uh, related to the frequently asked question. Uh, so. Um, uh, the guidelines enable the airline to have extra cabin crew. However, they must justify to their national authority and get acceptance for that to have this cabin crew. If they have uh, additional cabin crew, they can use the seats uh, in the cabin area, but the seat occupied by the cabin crew needs to be separated from the cargo. So there is uh, an item in the guidelines who say that there must be at least one empty seat room. So most probably uh, if the cabin crew are in the business class seat, uh, they are far away from the Yankee class. So it's, it would be okay. Okay. Uh, Vincent, uh if we have one question that I think you can support us. Uh, is the guidelines and exemption also valid for A320 or only for A330 and A350? Uh, but the the, and the, um, the principle of the exemption and the uh, and the general guidelines uh, are available for uh, are applicable for for aircraft so for A320 uh, as well. Uh, just that, uh, as um, as uh, highlighted uh, by or as answered by uh, by Matthias uh, uh, earlier during the the, the webinar, we uh, uh, we concentrate uh, the, the the work on the on the uh, SB development on uh, on, uh, on 330, 350, as uh, this is where we we got the, the most uh, um, request. Uh, but the principle uh, is applicable to uh, the 320 as well. Okay. And uh, we have also a question re regarding A340. Uh, so A330 or A340, uh, what, what, what applies to 330 applies to 340 as well. It's the same. When we talk about 330, we we talked about uh, the, the whole family, so 330, 340. So Airbus is planning to issue ISB also for A340, right? Yeah. Uh, Mikhail, uh, I think you can support us with this one. Uh, why are TSO nets not recommended by Airbus? <coughs> um, okay, and stress engineering um, um, has leveled the situation and they came to the conclusion that they don't want to actively uh, advertise a net solution because um, if a net is um, put over the seats, it might uh, it might uh, transmit load into the seat backrests, and the seat backrests backrest do not form part um, of the primary load path um, of the seats. And therefore, um, and it's from the principle possible, and Airbus uh, will uh, support the, re uh, the restraining of the net uh, in the seat tracks. But um, the reason for not actively advertising this solution is that the seat bags uh, do not form part of the primary load path of the seat. And um, um, Airbus would recommend to contact uh, the seat manufacturer to get his clearance for such an operation. And uh, we have also a question regarding the detachment on the seats. So the question is, uh, can seat belt be used to restrain cargo on, on seats? Yes, of course. I mean, 
the seed belt and the seed belt shackled is shackled is they, they lead to the primary load path um, of the seed. And this this um, this should be the primary um, method uh, to restrain cargo on the seeds. But if just um, the seed belt alone is used, then it might not be possible to restrain the cargo, cargo at all uh, special directions, that mean in X, Y, and Z. This is why um, additional traps might be needed, which are fixed then to the seat belts. Thanks. Uh, we have some questions uh, linked to the loading in approved locations. Uh, Vonsa, uh, is it okay to use a galley storage areas for cargo carriage without further approval? So there, there are um, locations in the aircraft that are already approved uh, for the uh, for the transport of uh, of items, which are the uh, overage storage compartments, for instance, or uh, in the galleys, uh, there are locations um, where you can transport uh, things. So, uh, for instance, ca cargo that would be put in the in the standard boxes, uh, which are secured in the in the galley, uh, or items that are transported in the in the trolleys, which are secured in the galley, this is okay. Uh, however, you cannot transport cargo directly in the in the location where you would put the trolley. Uh, it's the, the trolley who can be secured into the galley, for instance. So for this, uh, it is okay. Uh, on the contrary, it's not possible to transport cargo in the in the laboratories, for instance. Uh, but for the uh, for the already approved locations, uh, so overhead storage compartments and the uh, standard boxes or trolleys in the galleys, uh, it's okay. And um, I've seen uh, also a question, a more specific question about uh, uh, reclining seats, uh, asking if it's possible to uh, to put cargo on a, onto a reclined seat. Um, so uh, just to, to highlight that uh, that kind of seat, when it is reclined, is not uh, designed to uh, to transport uh, anything. So uh, cargo should not be uh, transported onto a reclined seat. Not approved for that. Okay. I have just uh, seen a question uh, regarding the which is the maximum weight uh, if we transport a big box that's taking a group of seats. So uh, Airbus has proposed some uh, common practice uh, and uh, what we say is that uh, it's limited to 100 pounds per seat uh, row and uh, we have proposed uh, some uh, some ways of restraint, and it is in the ISI article. So please, uh, if you want some additional information, check in the ISI article. Link it to the information we have in the ISI article as well. Uh, here, there's a question, uh, Mikhail, I think you can support me on that. Uh, how do operator ensure demonstrate straps Shall be approved for a minimum 8,890 pounds. Sorry, Newtons. 2,000 pounds. Um, the, the, most, the most easiest thing would be uh, to use um, uh, TSO equipment. Yeah? So, without the necessity to do further tests or any qualification of, of, of these straps. So use um, existing equipment that is already years old. It means you uh, you should ask to the uh, to the strap manufacturer uh, how the how to how much the uh, the strap is uh, is certified. Yes, to verify to verify the maximum load of the, the maximum capability load capa load capability of the straps with the with the uh, supplier. I'm just having a look at the questions. Uh, there is another question here. Uh, if we want to restrain on the floor, we can only use pallets or the exemption is also applicable to directly attaching on the floor? Mikhail, can you can you help on that? Yeah, from the principle, um, this can be exempted as well. Yeah. So um, 
and I mean, the, the, the guidelines um, uh, would allow this as well. So there's no, um, it, it can be done. Um, but um, um, all the uh, individual points of the guidelines need to be fulfilled. That means um, the restraining capability must be there. And, and this has to be demonstrated to the, to the local authority that if the cargo, when, it, when it's directly loaded on the floor and secured, most probably by a net, um, that it fulfills um, the structural uh, requirements. Okay, we have an, another question here that think it's your current procedures. Uh, supplemental oxygen system will have to be removed from the PSU channels without leaving any opening or should be deactivated. So the question is, is it acceptable to do it using the mechanical lock used by maintenance? Um, the answer is no, because um, <clears throat> the um, supplemental oxygen systems are removed to reduce uh, the fire risk above um, the location where cargo uh, where cargo is uh, transported. So, and uh, this mechanical lock um, would not protect from this. Another one, I think it also to cabin procedure is, cab can Airbus propose water FIREX part numbers that comply with EASA requirements? Um, with respect to part numbers, I'm not sure that I can answer this. this um, probably yes, but for this we would need uh, uh, an expert on fire extinguishing equipment. Uh, so this one I can't answer, I'm sorry. But I'm sure, um, but I'm sure um, um, there will be support from Airbus side because, um, because the equipment is known. Yeah? But this has to be clarified uh, with a fire extinguishing equipment expert. Sorry for this one. Uh, so I think we can still answer one last question. Uh, Jean, uh, is there a requirement to relocate a portable out with a lithium battery installed in a storage compartment adjacent to the pack seat? Uh, sorry, uh, Vera, I didn't catch. Uh, so the, the question is, yes, is there, is there a requirement linked to the relocation of portable out with lithium battery installed in a storage compartment adjacent to the PEX seats? Um, I'm sorry, I need to check that, but basically the, all the lithium uh, battery, all the equipment with the lithium battery uh, inside should not be in the cabin in the cargo area, but I need to check that. Okay. We can provide an answer in the update, in the next update of the easy article. That's, that's exactly what I was going to say. So. Uh, all questions are going to be provided in an update of the FOT, oh, sorry, in the ISI article, not FOT. And uh, then you have the complete answer. I have the impression that we covered all the questions. So. I would like to thank you all for joining our webinar today. This presentation is going to be shared with all of you and the ISI article is going to be updated to consider the answers of all questions. Have a nice day. Thank you, goodbye. Thank you all, goodbye. Thank you, uh, Vera and team. Thank, thank you, goodbye. Bye-bye, thank you.